It's time to chat fantasy romance yet again. Hi, my name is Katie, and if you're new, welcome to my channel. This has been an ongoing series on my channel where I talk about fantasy romance books that I want to read. And these can just be books that were somehow put on my radar that I just discovered and that I want to add to my TBR at the moment. This is the fourth video in the series, so please go check out the other three videos because there are a bunch of great recs there. But I will say it's been a long time since I did the last video in the series, so I have so many recs stored up. And that being said, I have read some of these already because I found them a while ago and I'm like, I want to read that right away. And I read it before I made the recommendation for this video. So I will just indicate whether or not I have read the book yet when I start about it. And I think I'm going to start with all of the books that I've already read. Um, but yeah, today I have 10 brand new fantasy romance recs to talk to you guys, tell you all about them and why I'm excited about picking them up. I just love fantasy romance so much as a genre and I really feel like especially with book talk it is growing even more than it was previously. It's just I think a lot of people want those same elements that are make YA fantasy really popular but like leveled up to the adult audience with maybe more mature themes or spicier story, spicier scenes. So most of these books are probably categorized in the new adult category even though it's not like official. But fantasy romance can span from like YA all the way to adult. It just tends to be that the ones that I recommend will probably be more in the new adult range. And if I have read it and I know like the spiciness, I will also indicate that. Starting off, the first book that I want to talk about is Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup, and then the sequel, Between Despair and Hope. I think this is going to be a six book series if I'm not mistaken. This is just so amazing. I have read this one, haven't gotten to this one yet just because I've been super busy, and I want to like really be able to like absorb everything about the story, so I do plan on reading it soon. I think that this book caters to a market of people that read fantasy romance that don't see themselves represented a lot in the genre and that has really helped with this book's popularity and I think like that's why so many people love it. We follow Emmeline Highclere and her daughter is the one that has been prophesized to bring peace to the entire kingdom and so she's been in hiding for the majority of her daughter's life because she doesn't want them to take her daughter away but her daughter is kidnapped by the enemy and so she must go to the man that she thought that she would forsake forever, Prince Rain. So she has not seen Prince Rain in 16 years, but when her daughter is taken, she has no choice but to go and appeal for his help. And they set out on a journey to get Emmeline's daughter back. I loved this book so, 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 so much. Like, it just has everything. The world building is really, like, complex and it's such an interesting and unique magic system. And again, I just, like, love the aspect of the fact that Emmeline is a mother, she's mid-sized, and she's kind of now put in the situation with her lost love. And it's really them, like, reconnecting after all these years and reliving all of the emotional kind of trauma that happened to them in the past and again now in the present. It is spicy of course and it's just so well done, so beautifully crafted and I do think that as the series goes on um, we will also get like more couples thrown into the mix so that's very exciting as well. Emmeline and Rain's story is just, it's just so beautiful and so touching and this book is everything. This next series is a trilogy and it's Vow of the Shadow King by Sylvia Mercedes. I had previously featured Sylvia Mercedes books in one of my past videos, that one being the Moonfire Bride duology, and now this one is a trilogy. And I mean, look at this cover. This cover is so stunning. So Princess Farine kind of lives this very sheltered life. She is a princess, but she was shipped off to a convent because she has this magical ability to feel the emotions of other people, but it actually becomes like very overwhelming for her to a point where it's like like sensory overload. And so she has to like go live in the quiet and the peace. And before I even finished the plot summary, I thought that that was so interesting because I've never seen a magical ability portrayed almost as like debilitating but if you think about it logically like that could kind of be the case it, it was very unique to me and i really like that aspect of the story the shadow king who is the king of the trolled people aka trolls but they're like they're one kind of fae that live underground like in the rocks or like in this rock realm so like they're still hot they're not like troll trolls you know so the shadow king comes to form an alliance with the human king and so to solidify the alliance he is going to marry one of his three daughters therene connects with the shadow king on his visit but she is not surprised that 
he instead picks the more charismatic princess Ishabel. But then something happens and these two are reconnected and that's really all that I want to say of the plot summary. I would almost caution you not to look up the plot summary because I feel like it almost gives away too much of the plot but just like kind of going to the knowing that and it was just very sweet. I loved their connection together and I thought that the troll kingdom of like this rock world was so cool and it was almost like um like it was just very well thought out because like the trolls like when they were in the human lands they were like afraid of the sky because they usually have like a rock ceiling over them so I thought that like the characters and the way that they are navigating the world through them it was like very well detailed. I really liked their romance it was so sweet and like, a little bit spicy um I would say this is definitely this one's probably more on the tamer side but I do think that these subsequent books are potentially going to get more spicy but I haven't read them yet so I cannot advise you on that. The next series is What Lies Beyond the Veil by Harper L. Woods um, and this is going to be a six book series so I also have the sequel here What Hunts Inside the Shadows and there's a cover I think it's like What Lurks inside the something like that I'll put the cover here um that's the third book that's going to come out but there's going to be six books total so yeah I have read both of these this one I will say is definitely definitely on the steamier side of the scale like there's a lot and it's wonderful so for hundreds of years, there has been this veil that separates the human realm from the fey realm. Estrella is being prepared to be the human sacrifice to like keep the veil alive, but on the day that she is to be sacrificed, the veil actually shatters. So now that the veil is shattered, the fey can find their mates. When the fey get their mates, like they both have like a mark on them and they're called fey marked, and fey only really mate humans, and it's like supposed to be like a balance of souls of sort. Um, so when you are marked, then the mist guard is going to hunt you down and kill you because when a fae finds their human mate, like, their powers are enhanced, so they don't want the fae to become, like, enhanced. So they would rather kill the humans that are marked than, like, let them be with their fae mates. Trella is on the run after then being marked when the veil falls, and she meets Calum, who is also marked and on the run, and together they are escaping from the forces that hunt them, whether that be the Fey or the Misgard or the Sort, and it is their journey. So I uh, yes, I thought that this was a really unique and interesting premise, and I'm excited to continue on with the series. Also, super steamy. Okay, so next, another one that I have read already, and that is Bow Before the Elf Queen by J.M. Curl, and its sequel, Long Live the Elf Queen. Again, these covers are so pretty. So I literally just got this one in the mail yesterday, and I hope that I can start it soon. Ayala has been in hiding her entire life because she knows that she is the mate of the high elf king Thane. She trains to take revenge against him for what happened to her parents her entire life, but she has always known that he was going to come for her. Now she has come face to face with the dark haired warrior king that she has been determined to hide from her entire life. But when she meets him she realizes that he is not at all like his cruel father and there may be way more to him than meets the eye. When she first meets him she wants to kill him and exact her revenge but there is a secret that he's keep- but it is revealed that Thane has a secret that makes it impossible for her to kill him. And she has an even darker truth that makes loving her forbidden. This was so good. I loved like the elf kingdom. Layala is like such a badass and their romance is really really sweet and this one ended on a big cliffhanger and I was shook and I can't wait to see where the next book goes. I do not know how many books are supposed to be in this series but I do know that the second one just came out and there is a title for the third one. And I would say on spiciness that's like somewhere in between like it's not the tamest one but it's not the spiciest one okay next is king of battle and blood by scarlet st Clair. scarlet st Clair is really popular for her touch of darkness series which i think i mentioned on one of my first fantasy romance book rec videos still haven't read that but i did read king of battle and blood i just like really wanted a vampire book and i read it and i was not disappointed isolde will do anything to protect the people of her kingdom and so she enters into a marriage bargain with the vampire king adrian he is known to be ruthless and bloodthirsty. However, she takes on this assignment with an ulterior motive. She will kill him to free her people. 
But when this fails, Adrian warns that if she tries again, he will turn her into a vampire. Obviously, Isolde does not want to become the thing that she hates the most, so she finds other ways to defy him and to try and survive the brutal machinations of the vampire court. But what she ends up fearing most is Adrian and her intense attraction to him. As time goes on, he begins to become less of a monster to her. But despite their growing chemistry, Isolde can't help but wonder why she was chosen to be his consort and the answer will change everything for her. This book did a thing I was not expecting and I thought it was really cool. The second book, Queen of Myth and Monsters, comes out in December, I think, and you bet I will be picking that up, maybe even rereading this one because it was so good, very smutty. I think I tabbed the smut on the top, so as you can see, there's a, there's a, it's very smutty and like, delivered on the steam, delivered on the plot, loved it loved it and vampire vampires vampires okay that is it for the books on the list that i have for you today that i've already read and as you can see i think it's more than half the list so yeah maybe i should make these more often is basically the moral of the story the next recommendation is a novella for when you want some fantasy romance but you don't have a lot of time to read a book i personally love novellas because i feel like i can get like a full story but it is quick so i kind of get them in between longer books this one is Shadow of the Eternal Flames by Priscilla Rose. I love this cover. I look at these characters. So the queen forces a political engagement upon Primrose with a man that she could never love. So she devises a plan and she decides to magically curse him, but this seems to only have cursed her instead. As her nightmares become a reality, she wakes up to a demon in her bedroom, a handsome and mysterious demon. So she teams up with her demon protector to break the curse that she's plagued upon her people. And I really, really love this tagline. It says, will she bloom like a rose or will she burn in the eternal flames? I love a good demon romance. <laughs> okay, next I have a cursed kiss and a cursed heart by Jenny Hickman. And these are the Myths of Arian book one and two. I think these follow two separate characters as well. Keelan witnesses her sister's murder at the hands of an immortal creature who seduces women and kills them with a kiss. So she seeks out a vengeful witch to get everything she needs to resurrect her sister. But first, she must slay the creature that killed her. Tugged, and I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a half fae with no patience for high society. And he does not want to help someone kill one of his own until Keelan makes him an offer that he cannot refuse. So they set off on a curse-breaking mission. Ooh. And yeah, I mean, look at this cover. It sounds so good. I love like the, okay, let's see the uh, tagline because those are always fire. Living on an island plagued by magic and mythical monsters isn't a fairy tale. It's a nightmare. Yes, sounds so good. So excited to get to this one. Got a map. Oh, there's art. There's art. Look at that. I love when there's art in books. And the dedication is for my fellow romanticy lovers seeking an escape. I love that. Oh, there's art in the second one too. Boom. The High Mountain Court by A.K. Mulford. What's exciting about this book is I actually got it in Barnes & Noble. So most of the uh, indie romances are usually purchased through Amazon because they are on the KU program. But these... Any romances have been starting to be stocked in Barnes & Noble and that just makes my heart so happy. Remy is potentially the last red witch alive and she has been spending her life fleeing from hunters. Northern court king slaughtered her kind and put a bounty on her head. When she encounters the handsome Prince Hale of the Eastern Kingdom, he knows that he needs Remy on his side. He is trying to start his court from being wiped out just the same as Remy's people were and he knows the help of a red witch can help him accomplish that. But can Remy really trust him? And can her fallen court be resurrected? And so for a chance to save her people, she must put her faith in Hale. Yes, it sounds so good. And I do think that this is going to be a series with multiple books. I think the second one might be out. Well, I wanna say most of these authors I follow on one form of social media or the other, and they are all lovely. All wonderful people okay this book is gigantic and i love it like the floppiness this one's really cool because it's like many different perspectives also i pre-ordered it and i got a bookmark a map double-sided map 
and this cute little recipe card for berry pie. This one's really, really cool. It's like political fantasy romance. Tagline is a commoner turned noble, a queen cast aside, a lady half forgotten, a court filled with lies. So there are three main women that we are following. Marietta, who is a half elven commoner, and she's abducted and forced into marriage with an elven lord. There's Valeria, who's a queen without power, and she's trying to undermine the husband she loathes for the legacy she craves. And finally, there's Elise, who is a lady with untold potential determined to remain unseen. In the kingdom of Inomenos, everyone is equal, but in Sologi, the elves rule over all, and this causes a conflict between the two kingdoms, and war breaks out. And thus, Marietta, who is a half who's half elven finds herself at the center of this conflict. So Queen Valeria learns of Marietta and she digs into her past to use that past as a weapon to wield and a chance to dethrone the king. And then there is Elise who lives in the shadows but is thrust into the light when her magical abilities are discovered. And all three will determine the fate of their kingdom. And it says, a queen's game blends fantasy, romance, and political intrigue for an unforgettable story that will leave you guessing until the end. The last series I have to talk about is the Bonds That Tie series. So the first one is Broken Bonds. These are by Jay Bree, by the way. Then there's Savage Bonds. Blood Bonds. And... Force bonds. So I just have the first four, but books five and six are out, so I will put them on the screen here. And this is a why I choose fantasy romance, so I feel like combining lots of different things that I like, you know? When Ollie's mother dies and as well as her bonded, Ollie can then find her own bonds. I was sure everything would be okay, but then it wasn't. She's been on the run for five years. And she's caught and dragged back to face the men that she ran away from. She thought that she was doing the right thing, but now she's not so sure. And the fate of her people is in her hands, and she knows that she's better off alone. I have seen so many raving reviews for this series, and I mean, these covers are absolutely beautiful. It just seems really, really intriguing and cool, and again, I will want to read this soon. Okay, and those are all of the series that I have to recommend today. Um, now that the weather is getting colder, I'm definitely like in my, oh my god, I want to read fantasy romance mood again. In the summer, I was like rom-coms, and now I'm like fantasy romance. So I am definitely going to be making more fantasy romance-centered content, obviously starting with this video, um, but I also have some vlogs in the work. So I'm very, 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 very excited to just like read all these books that I have been recommending. And you know, I have some books that I still need to catch up on all of the series that I have recommended in other videos. So please check out my playlist. I will have it linked like above, below, wherever. Um, you can look on my channel page and you can check out all my fantasy romance related content. And um, let me know down below if you've read any of these series. If not, like which one sounds the most intriguing to you. And I hope that you check out these books and enjoy them when you read them. And with that, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.